Hi, George here. And today we're going to be doing a fade to transparent. There's the transparent right here, which is a great trick to be able to use for cards, things like that. We'll then be coming in here and making that a bit nicer with an overlay. And then you can use this to just pop in a family portrait or something in behind. You have a real nice Christmas card. Just put in some text and you're all set to go. Okay, see how this is all done. I'll close this and we'll start off with this image. This is the original image. I'll put a link for this in the description if you want to download this one or use your own picture, that's fine. And then we'll also make a new file in here. Let's go up here to file, come down to new, blank file. And this is going to be a photo size right there. And in here, I'm choosing the landscape four by six. And okay. And there we go. This is our working file right there. I'll take this and just drag this down like that. So makes it really easy to bring this in. Now, if you don't have drag and drop enabled, it's real simple. Go up here to edit, come down to preferences and general right there. And just make sure that this checkbox, allow floating documents in advanced mode is checked. And you can then float your windows. The reason I like this is that I can then just grab that background, drag it over here and bring that picture in. The other way to do this, of course, would just be go up here to file and come down and use place, and then place your image in. That also works fine. Okay, let's just position this about where I want it, which is kind of about like that. So it's over towards the left-hand side. And there are a few problems in here. We can adjust the size, of course, get the way size you want. I kind of like it being a bit larger than smaller. So I'll put it about right here, maybe a little bit more. I'll go a little larger than I did in that preview sample. I'll go right to here. I think that's actually going to work out better for us right there, just because the packages down here be better. And the tree seems to be leaning to the right-hand side, at least in my opinion. So I'll go over here to the rulers. Now, if you don't have rulers showing, go up to view, come down here and just check rulers. You just want to have guides checked. That should be checked already. Grab the left side ruler and drag it in. And you get a guideline here. And you can use this to center up that tree. I'm going to put it so it's kind of in the center of the bottom part of the tree, which is right about here. It looks pretty good. And then we're still on that layer. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut. That brings up our transform controls down below here. Click on skew and then grab that top control handle right there and just pull that to the left until we get that star aligned on the center of that. There we go. That looks better. We can now grab this guideline, pull it back off again. We're done with that. The next thing we have in here is this picture back here in that lamp. I want to get rid of those two things. We don't need those. Now, since I'm going to be painting right on this layer, I'll make a backup safety of this. Over here, it says layer. Right click on that, duplicate layer, choose OK. Hide that one, and we'll work on the copy. Just in case things go wrong, I can still go back here and try it again. Okay, let's zoom in. I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom. If you don't have that set up, go back up here to edit, come down to preferences, back to general, and that's a checkbox right here. Zoom with scroll wheel, and this works if you have a wheel on your mouse. And I think that's a great way to work. It makes it real easy to zoom in and out. Okay, now let's go over here, grab this tool. This is the clone stamp tool. You want this on a soft edge and a pretty good size. That's a good size for this. It's about four times smaller than the size of the picture. That's good enough. Come down to part of a line down here. I'll come way down here somewhere. Hold the Alt key down and click right on that line. And then you can see that line right there. Actually, go over here. You can kind of see where that line is. Match the line up. And then go back and forth on that and paint in from that spot. Now those lines are going to keep on matching, so it should give a real clean clone stamp on this. We'll hit the picture again up here in just a moment, I'm sure. We'll find the bottom edge of it again as we're copying that. There it is. At that point, stop. Come back down. Do it again. Come down here someplace. Alt and click right on the line. Come back up here again. Align that line up. And then hold down your mouse button and paint that in and get rid of this stuff up here. That just gives us a nice clean background area. And I'll use the control zero keyboard shortcut to fit screen back to our move tool. So far, so good. At this point, we need to have a copy of this layer. So go up here, this is layer copy one, right click on the name, duplicate layer, choose OK. We can hide that one. We'll be using that in just a bit. Let's come back down to this layer and we're going to be putting a fade out on this. This one's real easy. Go up to the layer mask button, hit that. Here's our layer mask. Now with layer masks, black hides and white shows. So if I had a layer mask with a gradient that went from white over here, left-hand side to black on the right-hand side, the image would fade out. I also have transparency because that's the background layer down there. If I hide that, there's our transparency. 
Okay, let's now go up here, grab the gradient tool. What I want to do is to go from black to white, but I want to have white over here and black over here. So come down here, click on reverse. So it's now white over here, white shows, black over here, black hides. I want it all hidden at this point. So come into the section right over here, hold your shift key down to get an exact line like that. Pull to the right, look over here someplace, and that fades it out. If you're not happy, just do it over again. Let's go a little further. I want to go far enough so that I almost see that edge, but not really. And I think maybe it's just right about here, and that edge goes away. And I'm using the linear gradient right over here, left-hand side. This is the default. You should already be on that. Okay, there's our fade out for the Christmas tree. This is just the background part. We'll then come back in and put the Christmas tree back in again using our layer up here. And here we want to make a mask that masks out just the tree and hides the background. So the tree and these two packages down here are going to be solid, and then the background is going to fade out in behind them. So I'll zoom in again using that scroll wheel. And for this, because we have some straight edges in here, over there, and straight edges over here, I want to use the polygonal lasso tool. And that gives me straight edges. Make sure that you have this set at new right there. Feathering is at zero. Anti-aliasing is fine. And I'll start right over here at the top of this one, just outside the edge, and click and drag. Now with this tool, you put in a point like that, and then move to your next point, and Photoshop Elements comes in and puts a line between the points that you click. Now the one thing about this tool to be careful on is don't click too fast. If you do that, it's like a double click, and it collapses your selections. Make sure you do not click too fast. Okay, let's start back over here again. And we'll come in and do this. Now, if you do click too fast, it is possible to go back in. And with add and subtract on your selection, you can kind of fix it. But it's easier just to start over again. So take your time on this and work clear around the whole tree. Now, I'm going to put this on fast forward in here. There's no reason for you to watch me spend a couple of minutes doing this and just talking. So I'll put it on fast forward. And I'll bring this back in again as soon as I finish going around the tree and around those packages at the bottom right-hand side. And to move your image like that, just hold the space bar down. You can then drag your image around, let go, and then you're back to putting in your points. the bottom you can go outside like this just put in a few points in here go back to the beginning spot and there's our selection okay now we're going to fix this edge in here with refine edge click on that i'm using the overlay in here and then here's our brush i'll leave all these at their default settings that should work out fine for us maybe bring our contrast up sometimes having this up about halfway will help there we go and let's bring our size down. I'll put it about 20, 19, pretty close. Okay. And then just brush in like this, just little strokes. You want to start outside here and then brush in. I think the contrast is too high, and that'll bring that back down again. Let's try this. And that's working better. Sometimes contrast works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends upon the picture and kind of depends upon what mood. Elements is in. And this brush right along the edge. Notice that the cross here is outside in the area that I want to remove. And then I'm just coming into the area I want to keep. And that lets elements know where I want to have the edge cleaned up. And then just take your time and work around the edge. Now, when you're making any kind of a selection like this, any kind of a mask, it's good to just be careful with that and take your time. Notice I'm just coming into that edge. Now what I did just here, tap the space bar, and you can see where you have made your selection like that. Tap it again, and you're back to this view. If you want to move your image, go over here, click on the hand tool. And you can then drag your image like that. And then back over to your painting tool. And we'll continue on here. 
You can just do little bits at a time and then let Photoshop Elements have a chance to go in and do its correction. It just seems to work better that way instead of trying to do the whole thing all at once. Just little bits at a time. We'll clear on the star up here and then we'll do the other side. As we'll take some cleanup, but that's okay. It's not a whole lot of cleanup. And since we're on top of the exact same picture, it makes that cleanup much easier. It's kind of the same thing that I would do if I was doing hair. Same idea because the bristles here on the tree are very much like hair, actually. Work our way down, back to the hand tool here, and back to our brush. Now, we don't have to do around the boxes because those are hard edges, so using the hard edge is perfect on that. We only need this around the softer areas in the tree. And almost finished here. Just around this little bit here and down to that Christmas hat, Santa hat right there. And that's all we have to do. Let's come down now and go to Output 2. I'm going to output this to a new layer with Layer Mask. Choose OK. There we go. Now in here, because we faded out, you can see a little bit of that edge right along in here. It's fine on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you can kind of see where that edge is. We can easily fix that. Go over here and grab this tool. This is the Burn tool. You might be seeing this tool up here. That's the Dodge tool. You want to go over here to the Hand. That's the Burn tool. This is my default size. 32 pixels is fine. And then go over here to the Layer Mask side. Double-click on that. Look for that light blue outline. That's your Layer Mask side. And then just come in here and paint right on top of that. What that does is it makes the layer mask more contrasty, tightens up that edge, and that gets rid of all that little stuff. Okay, hold the space bar down, move your image up, and let's just get the rest of this. You can see how easy this actually is. It's a pretty easy project, but it has a real nice effect. That looks good. Control zero to fit screen again. And there's your fade out. Now notice down here that this pack is really dark over here, and I like to have it lighter. It's just a bit too dark on the bottom. You could leave it dark. It depends upon your picture. I think this should be a bit lighter. So you lighten up that by going up here to the, to the layer menu. Come down to New Adjustment Layer and Levels. Where it says Use Previous Layer. Check that. Choose OK. I want to lighten up this part here, so I'll bring my middle control up. That lightens that up. Let's bring the left side over just a touch. Brings our contrast back in again. Now all I care about is just right down here. That's all I'm looking at. And I'll bring it a little bit lighter, a bit more contrast. I think that looks pretty good for this area. Everything else is all washed out, but that's easy to fix. Notice that on that layer, we have a layer mask, which means I can paint onto this layer mask and only show the adjustment over here. That's going to go back over here again to our gradient tool. Let's uncheck the reverse. I don't want to show the adjustment over here. I do want to show it here. So I'm on the layer mask side. And anything I paint on here is going to paint on the layer mask. So again, I'll come just outside, hold the shift key down so you get a straight line and pull it over like that and let go and just try a few spots. And what I'm doing is I am putting a gradient right on the layer mask so that my adjustment is only showing over here and it's not showing any place else. I can come in and do another adjustment and add more contrast in here if I wanted to. So you can do multiple adjustments stacked on top of one another. Let's go up here to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, Levels. Use Previous Layer, choose OK. And I'll bring the black up a little bit. And this is darkening it down for the whole section, including that tree up there. So I have one adjustment that kind of evened out the values and the second adjustment for the whole thing. Right there looks pretty good. A little more white, not much. Okay, I also want to have more color in here. So for that, let's go up here to the Layer menu, New Adjustment Layer, Use saturation. Again, check that box. Choose OK. And let's bring our saturation up, and there it comes back in our color. There's too much, obviously. Just a little bit more. And make our colors more exciting. There we go. That looks good. Then all you have to do, you can hide that background. There's your transparency. If you want to put an image in behind it, just put it right here above the background layer. Let's see how that's done. I'll go up here to File. I have one already in here. And that's this family shot right there. This is not my family. This is just something I got off of some stock photography. Drag it over here, drop it in, and then position your picture. There we go. And there's a nice family Christmas card. Bring our background back in again to kind of fill in the area up here. Real easy to do. Just using a fade out for the background. Bring the tree back in, make some adjustments, and there we go.
Now, if you have my HTG Photo Coach for Photoshop Elements, I'll be putting this project file in the Photo Coach. So you can go over there and download the whole project file if you want to have that as reference. I'll put the Christmas tree picture. I'll put a link for that in the Photo Coach, but I'll also put a link for that in the description. In case you don't have the Photo Coach, you can still get the Christmas tree. For more discussions on how I use all of these different tools, the best place for that is my Photo Coach. And I'll put a link for that in the description. And in that, I cover everything in the program. And it's all text-based, step-by-step instructions. Real easy to use. It's like a super-duper help file. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up like button. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos as they go up. I do new videos every single week. And I'll see you next time.